Hello everybody, AJ Ryzik here, and in today's tutorial, I am going to show you how to install WordPress on Ubuntu. Now, you may be wondering, okay, you know, WordPress is what is used to power somebody's blog. Why are you installing it on Ubuntu? Well, there's all kinds of different reasons why you may be doing this. Um, you know, maybe you want to install it locally on on your home computer so that you can do a little testing of the beta versions or the nightly builds um, maybe you want to install it there and play around with different themes try to figure out what's going to work out good for your blog maybe you're going to build your blog locally at home before uploading it to the server I, there's just all kinds of reasons why you may want to uh, you know may want to install it locally hey you know maybe you're working on a home server and um, yeah, you're going to uh, you're going to use WordPress as your content delivery system. And actually, uh, speaking of that, jump over to the Freedom Penguin website, and Matt Hartley had a really neat idea uh, for a uh, a home recipe server, um, yeah, using WordPress and. Uh, really really interesting idea I've used WordPress for years and never thought of uh, never thought of using it in the way that he used it in that video um, so definitely jump over there and take a look at that but anyway um, the actual WordPress install isn't all that hard it's um, getting the stuff ready for WordPress what you need to have in place is what is commonly referred to as the lamp stack and um, let me drag Wikipedia over here. And LAMP is a typical model of web service solution stack. It's an acronym for the original four open source components, the Linux operating system, uh, Apache server, MySQL, which is database management system, and PHP. So that's where you get the, uh, the LAMP from. So basically, the installing and configuring those components is, and I wouldn't really say it's all that difficult, just the most tedious. You've got to really pay attention to what you're doing, make sure that you get, uh, uh, you know, file names correct and all that. Really not that difficult, just really got to pay attention to the details. But anyway, enough of me talking about uh, what we're going to do, and let's get started doing it. All right, first we're going to open up a terminal and we are going to install the MySQL components first. And don't worry, there will be a full write-up on my blog so that you don't have to try to copy all this off the screen. So we're going to do that first and then MySQL is going to ask for a password for the root user. So create a password, put it in, and then it'll ask for a repeat of the password. Okay, all right, all that is done, and we'll allow that to install. All right, all of that is installed. So now we're going to install Apache. This part is fairly straightforward. And here comes PHP. And we'll install that now. By the way, I am running this on uh, Ubuntu GNOME 1404. Pretty much uh, any of the Ubuntu versions this is going to work on. And, and actually, it should work on just about any Linux distribution. As long as you have access to, you know, basically these components here that I'm installing, and no problem. All right. After that's installed, we're going to restart the Apache server. And now, just so you can see, we'll open up Firefox and put in localhost and visit localhost, and boom, you get the default um, Apache Debian 
uh, test page. All right, I'm going to do this part with NEMA, which is my file manager, just so it's easier to see. If you are comfortable doing this in the terminal, by all means, go ahead. But I'm doing this uh, mainly through the file manager, just so you can see what I'm doing. Go to the ETC folder, and you'll find an Apache 2 folder. And sites available folder, and then triple zero dash default dot config. So we're going to go to that, open it up, and where it says document root, we want to change that. You see the HTML that it ended in. We want to get rid of that HTML. Save that file. Back out and go to the Apache 2 config file. And we're going to make sure that, that has the same uh, has the the uh, the same address listed. And you kind of got to scroll down a lot through through this one. So if you come to directory, uh, you'll see where it says var slash www. It's already correct in my case, but you do want to check to, just to be sure that it is uh, that it is correct. Okay, so now after we've done that, we are going to um, we're going to restart uh, the Apache server. So let's go and download Word. Yeah, well, I can't talk. Uh, download WordPress. Oops, sorry. That's the uh, that's the uh, plugin page. Go to download WordPress, and we're going to download the tar file. Also, if you want to try out the beta or the nightly release, you can see over in the sidebar there's links to uh, to those as well. Uh, so if you want to get those, so that you can see what's up and what up and coming, new stuff, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so we downloaded that, and once again, I'm doing this through Nemo so that you can see what I'm doing. Um, you can see where I downloaded WordPress, and we'll open up our file system folder, and let's see, what folder was that? Oh yeah, the, the var folder. Go to www, and this is where you want to move your, your WordPress download. So once you get it there, you want to extract it. So now we need to set up our database. So let's put in uh, this line right here, mysql-u root-p. Put in our root password that we set up earlier for mysql. Okay, so now we are in MySQL. We're going to create a database, and I'm calling it Ubuntu underscore WP. Call it whatever you want, but whatever you name it, you need to remember this, write it down, or whatever you need to, because you're going to need it later. Okay, we're going to give it flush privileges. And essentially, that's all that we need to do right here. We're going to exit out. So with that done, we can open up Firefox again, and we'll go to localhost and slash WordPress. And so we're going to start with the WordPress setup. So we're going to need to, this is where we need that, that information from earlier. We're going to need to put in our database name. And the username, which is root, put in that password that uh, we created earlier. Database host, in this case, is localhost, and the table prefix. We'll just leave that as default. 
Okay, and so you'll get this message here uh, that it can't write the uh, the WP uh, PHP config file, and that is all right. We're going to open gedit with root privileges, and we're going to copy all of this uh, this whole text box here. Just copy all the text, paste it into this document, and we will save it as our WP config PHP file. And that is going to be located, we just need to go to where WordPress is, which is in that www folder, go to the WordPress folder, and just going to call it wp-config.php all right save that file and now we can run the install so now we need to set up our site title Create a username, create a password, and just for demonstration purposes, I'm putting in one, two, three, four, five, six. Put in your email that you want uh, the, you want to use for uh, the administrator email. and then just click the install WordPress button. And so here we are at the login screen for our WordPress instance. Put in your username and password and boom here we are at the back end of WordPress. And that's essentially it for the install. Just wanted to say again, there will be a full write-up of this tutorial on my blog page at ajrizik.com. There will be a link down below in the video description so that you can go to that page and uh, and check that out. Um, well, oh, I did, you know, I mentioned earlier I'm on Ubuntu 14.04, or Ubuntu GNOME 14.04, um, and I know... I know that from 14.04 on up to current versions that uh, MySQL and Apache and all that is updated enough or at least a, a recent enough version that WordPress is going to run just fine. Um, earlier versions of Ubuntu you may have to install some PPA so that you can update the LAMP stack. Uh, I'm not sure on that but at least from 14.04 on up I know everything runs just fine. Um, so no problems there. And once again, you should be able to install this on any Linux distribution using the method that i just shown you here as long as you have access to the PHP, the, the Apache, and so on and so forth. Um, but having said all that, that about finishes the things up here. As always, comments, questions, all that kind of stuff down below. Please subscribe if you are not a subscriber. And I hope to see you all on my next video. Thanks a lot.